Rishas, the Maradasra, we're continuing our share in Dishu Bahalacha. We'll just turn this off. Okay. So, we started Sim and Shinai and Beis. We finished Sif Aleph except for one Mishnah Brura. We're on Reish Lamites Amad Aleph. And we're all the way at the bottom at Mishnah Brura Ois Katan Tez Zayin. So, just to remind ourselves, the Machaber had said over here like this. The Machaber said, you're allowed to carry. You're allowed to move items from one chatzar to another chatzar, even if the two chatzarim are not joined in an aruve chatzeros. And the mechaber said, "Va'afal pi she'ervu b'nei chatzar la'atzman," even though each one of the individual chatzarim made their own aruve chatzeros, still you're allowed to transfer things from one chatzar to the other as long as they are kelim she'shav su b'chatzar. Kalim that started out Shabbos in one of the Chatzerim, you could move it from one Chatzer to the other Chatzer, even if each Chatzer has its own independent Eruv Chatzeris. And the Mechaber himself explained that the Chiddush of that is, if the two Chatzerim would not have their own individual Eruv Chatzeris in, so then you wouldn't have to worry that in the Chatzer there might be a Kali Sheshavas Babayas. Because how would a Kali Sheshavas Babayas get into the Chatzar? Nobody could move anything from a house to the Chatzar because they don't have an individual Eruvah Chatzeres. The Mechaber told us, but even if they do have an individual Eruvah Chatzeres, so now each Chatzar can move Kalim Sheshavsu Babayas from the house to the Chatzar. So now there are Kalim Sheshavsu Babayas in the Chatzar. Still, you're allowed to move Kalim from one chatzar to the other. And we're not afraid that you're going to come to, move, to transfer kelim sheshavsu babayis that happened to be in the chatzar from one chatzar to the other. Now, the premise of this mechaber, what one fact that comes out very clear from this mechaber is that you are not allowed to move a keli sheshavas babayis from one chatzar to another chatzar without any ruvet chatzeres, even if that keli is in the chatzar beheter. Right? Because what, what did the Mechaber say? The Mechaber said, really, if you have a keli sheshavas babayis and you have an ruvet chatzeres, so you took the lawn chair from the house and you put it into the chatzar, you did that beheter, because you have an Eruvah Chatzeris. Still, you're not allowed to take that lawn chair now and move it to another chatzar unless you have an Eruvah Chatzeris with that chatzar, right? So we see very clearly that even if an object went from the bias to the chatzar, beheter, you're still not allowed to now move it from this chatzar to that chatzar. And like the Chazanish explains, the Chazanish explains that the reason for this is you might think, you might look at this lawn chair, right? You have an Uruvah Chatzeris. So you took the lawn chair from the bungalow and you put it in the yard. Now you want to move it to the Perky of a chair from this yard to that yard. Somebody tells you, you're not allowed to do it. There's, there's no Uruvah Chatzeris between these two yards. So you'll say back to him, yeah, but that din is only by Kalim Sheshav Subabayas. And this Kaylee, this lawn chair, is not a bias Kaylee anymore. I removed it from the bias, and I brought it to the Chatzar, and I did it Peheter. So now maybe it becomes a clay HaChatzar, and maybe now you're allowed to move it. After we're talking about after Shabbos started, Shabbos afternoon. But you might have a Havamina that maybe this lawn chair now becomes clay HaChatzar, because it got to the Chatzar Peheter. Says the Chazanish, the Mechaber is letting you know that that's not the case. The Mechaber is letting you know that even though it came to the Chatzah Beheter, it started out Shabbos in the bias. If it started out Shabbos in a bias, it is called a Kali Abayas. It's called Kalei Abayas. And you're not allowed to move it now. You're allowed to move it to a Chatzah that has an Eruvah Chatzeris, but now you want to move it from this Chatzah to that Chatzah without an Eruvah Chatzeris? That you can't do. So that's the first thing that we see from this Mechaber. And that's the beginning of this Mishnabura. It's cut into Zayim. Shem yitaltol gam kelim, says the Chavetz Chaim, mizeh mavur, from this passage in the Mechaber, it becomes very clear, the kelim she shavsu babayas, 
when you're dealing with Kalim that started out Shabbos in the Bayis, Af Shebo Beheter Lechotzer Zeh Mipnei She'ervuba, even though you now brought it from the Bayis to the Chotzer, Beheter, because you have your own individual Eruvah Chatzeres, Af Al Pikein, still and all, Aser Lailichon Lechotzer Acheres, Shalai Ervu Yimahen, you're not allowed to bring it now to another Chatzer with which you do not have an Eruvah Chatzeres. And if you take a look in, in Dershu footnote number 9, they'll quote the Chazanish that I just told you. But the Chazanish says that the reason you can't do this is because this is still considered Kalei Habayis. Now, the Chavetz Chaim takes this to another step. Says the Chavetz Chaim, for Hu Hadin, the same halacha would apply. And it, and it took me reading this Mishtabur a couple of times until I realized clearly what the Lushan of the Mishtabur, what the Mishtabur is saying. Din, the same din applies. Im hoitzi mi bate hachotzer lahachotzer shaloi ervuba. Let's say bungalow colony A did not make it a rivechatzeris. So really, in bungalow colony A, you cannot move a keli sheshavas babayis into the chotzer because you don't have any rivechatzeris. But there is a way that you can move a keli sheshavas babayis into the chotzer. And you know how? You could take your jacket and you could put it on and you could wear it outside. That's derech malbush. So now you moved it beheter from the bias to the chotzer, right? Says the Mishnah For who adin? Im hoitzi mi bate a chotzer la a chotzer shaloi ervuba. If you moved something from one of the houses into the, in the chotzer to the chotzer without an eruve chotzeris, and you did this you wore it outside and now you took it off in the chatzar oh, so now you put on your jacket in the bias and we're assuming that your jacket was hanging in the closet at Zman Knisas Shabbos right, so now you have a keli Shabbos Babayas really, you can't take anything out to the chatzar because you don't have any ruvah chatzeris but you put the jacket on. Now you took it out to the Chatzah Beheter. Now it's hot outside. So now you took the jacket off, and now the jacket is on the back of the chair in the Chatzah. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a Keli Shashavas Babayas that you brought out to a Chatzah Bederech Heter. Gam Kain Osser Lachser Lohitzi Misham Lachatzah Acheres. You're not allowed to take this jacket and bring it now to the next Chatzah. No, if you wear it, it's fine. But if you want to pick it up and carry it, you cannot pick it up and carry it to the next chotzer. Oh, oh, so, so you're wondering, you're wondering, what's the Kiddush that the Mishnah is telling me here? It's the same case as we just had before. You took the lawn chair, you had an Erev, so you brought the lawn chair from the house to the chotzer with your Erev, so you did a Beheter, now it's in the chotzer Beheter, we said you're not allowed to take it to the next chotzer. So what's the Mr. Brewer adding over here? He's telling me I had a jacket and I don't have an Erev. And I wore the jacket out to the Chatzar, so I brought it to the Chatzar Beheter. Now I cannot bring it to the next Chatzar. What's the Chiddush? Oh, so I'll tell you what the Chiddush is. The difference between these two cases is as follows. In the first case, what did I tell you the Chazanish said? In the first case, the Havamina was that I might think that this lawn chair since I brought it to the Chatzar Ba'ifen Heter, since I brought it to the Chatzar Beheter, maybe now it becomes Klea Chatzar. Kamash Bala, no, it's not Klea Chatzar, it's still Klea Bayas. Says the Chavetz Chaim that now there's another Chiddush. That Chiddush is, you might have thought, why does the lawn chair remain Klea Bayas? Because the Bayas and the Chatzar are joined in an Erev. So if the bias and the chatzar are joined in an Erev, so on a certain level, when you took the lawn chair from the bias and you brought it out to the chatzar, you didn't totally remove it from the bias because the bias and the chatzar are joined in an Erev. But in the new case that the Mishdebrur is giving you, the bias and the chatzar are not joined in an Erev. In this case, they didn't make it a Ruve Chatzeris. So really, the jacket, when you removed it from the bias and you brought it to the chatzar, you totally removed it from the bias. Maybe now it's called Klea Chatzar. 
Says the Mishnah no, it is still called clay habayis. If a keli starts out Shabbos in habayis, it is clay habayis for the rest of Shabbos. Whether it got there beheter, whether it got there beiser, whether there is an eruv chatzeros, whether there is not an eruv chatzeros, it remains clay habayis. And if you don't have an eruv chatzeros with the next chutzer, you're not allowed to bring it to the next chutzer. There's an Eruv, there's no Eruv Chatseris. There's no Eruv Chatseris. There are Mechitzas, there's no Eruv Chatseris. So he wore his jacket outside, now he can't take it out. Now, get a load of this. Now look what the Mishnah Berurah says now. Okay, however, Enoi Mavur Behedya, it is not clearly spelled out, Ma Din Kalim Elu Betiltel Chatser Ze Atzmai Im Mutter Oiloi. The guy wore the jacket out from the bungalow into the chatzar without the Neruve Chatzerais. Now he took off the jacket and he put it down on the lawn chair. Are you allowed to pick up that jacket and be metaltal at Dalaramas in the chatzar? Now, let's not get confused. What we call an Eriv, you have an Eriv. You've got your lechis, you've got your strings. You're within an Eriv. The problem is, that this jacket doesn't belong here. This jacket is a clay bias, and you moved it from a bias to a chutzer without any ruvah chutzeris. Now, you were allowed to do it because you were wearing it. You're allowed to wear the jacket out from the bungalow into the chutzer, but now you took it off. Now you have a clay bias that's in the chutzer without any ruvah chutzeris. Are you allowed to be metaltalit dalaramas? Now, I'm going to take this one step further. What? In the first case, first case we, we it, yeah, because yes. you, you have a river chateras. What's the problem? Now I'm going to give you this same shaila in a little bit of a different scenario that would could uh, be very pertinent to us. Okay, you're up in the mountains, and you're in your bungalow colony. And in your bungalow colony, you have an Erev, and you have, you have an Eruv Echatzeris, right? Now, you have a, a hat that was a Keli Shavas Babayis. You weren't wearing it at Zman Knisas Shabbos. Ben Ashmoshes, when Shabbos came in, this hat was sitting on the shelf in your closet. So this hat is a Keli Shavas Babayis. Now, you want to walk down Route 42 to the next bungalow colony. We assume that it's in the Tchub. And you want to go to the next bungalow colony to visit your friend. And you don't have an Eruv Chatzeris with that bungalow colony. You can't. You're, you're far apart from each other. You can't have an Eruv Chatzeris. So you don't have an Eruv Chatzeris with that bungalow colony. Now you go into your closet. You put your hat on. You're fine. You go. You walk out of your Eruv. You walk out to Route 42. You're fine. You walk into your friend's bungalow colony. You look at the fence. Oh, I'm in. I'm in the bungalow colony, and the bungalow colony has an Erev, and it's hot outside. So I want to take my hat off, and I want to carry my hat. Okay, <laughs> if you're allowed to be metaltal the hat, Talad Amis in the Chatzar. Why? What? It doesn't matter. It, no, 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 no. Your Chatzar, your bungalow colony that you came from, does not have an Aruba Chatzeris with this bungalow colony. Right. And your hat came from your Chatzer. It's a Kali Shashavas Babayas in your Chatzer, and now it's in another Chatzer that you don't have an Erev with. Says the Mishnah Berurah, I don't know if you're allowed to be a Metaltal at Dalaramas. Why not? Why not? So in the Bir Alacha, on the previous page, this long Bir Alacha, the Chavetz Chaim explains that this question is the topic of a Machloikis Rishonim. And the Chavetz Chaim is not Machria, what the Halach is. He says it's a Machloikis Rishonim, but he explains what the Machloikis Rishonim is based on. He says what, it based, what it's based on is like this. We explained always in the mechanics of a Ruvei Chatzeris that there's a critical difference between a bias and a chotzer. A bias is a rishos hayachid 
that's miyuchid to one entity. It's miyuchid to you. The chotzer is a rishos hayachid, but it's miyuchid for a rabbin, right? It's a communal rishos rabbin. So a rishos hayachid. So on a certain level, the chotzer feels, looks, and tastes like a rishos rabbin. So the Chazal treated the chotzer a little bit like a rishos rabbin. And they said, we can't let you carry from your bungalow to the Chatzar without an Eruvet Chatzerois because it feels like you're going from Rishos HaYachet to Rishos HaRabim. And if we let you do that, you might come to go from a real Rishos HaYachet to a real Rishos HaRabim. Say to Rishonim that want to answer this, maybe Chazal treated a Chatzar She'enu Mu'revis when you bring your hat from your Chatzar to a different Chatzar with which you do not have an Eruv, Maybe now Chazal treat that Rishos HaYachid in the context of your hat like a Rishos HaRabim. And in a Rishos HaRabim, you're not allowed to be metalpil more than Dalai Lamas. And the other Rishonim say, no, we don't find such a concept. Where do we find such a concept? That you have an Erev and it's a Rishos HaYachid and that Chatzar has an Erev and Chatzar, right? Where do we find a concept that you're not allowed to be metalpil Dalai Lamas? But I'm telling you again, Chavetz Chaim brings down this Machalikas Rishonim He's not machria. Now I asked Rabbi Goldman, I said, the, the, the Chavetz Chaim is not machria, the halacha. Do you know how we fear tzach? He told me, he said, I'll tell you the honest truth. I don't know. It's not something that's very it's common. He says, he told me, he said, could, no, no, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, for us, here, here in Willowbrook, you'll never have the Shiloh come out. So he told me, he said, call Lakewood, because in Lakewood, this has to be very common. But not just that. You have all these housing complexes. Westgate, Schmetzgate, the Hookgate, Upgate, Downgate. So you have all these housing complexes that all have their own Eruvin. And people walk back and forth. So I called up my schwager, my brother-in-law, who says a dear shushir in, in Lakewood. And I said, No, what did you do in Shinan Beis Tif Aleph? What did you do with this halacha? So he said, Well, I didn't think it was too negayas. I said, What are you talking about? <laughs> Westgate to, to, to whatever, you know. He said, oh, wait a second, you know, you're right. So he called me back later, and he told me that the Chazanish is Mekel, and the Chazanish says you could be Mekel on this, and you could be Metaltal more than Dalar Hamas, and he says it looks like the Olam is Saimach on the Chazanish. No, he, no, he was told, he, no, he was told by people that there's Saimach, he was told by Paiskim that there's Saimach on the Chazanish. But just, I'm showing you, I'm showing you how, how wide it goes. But now this is the same halacha as the case that I gave you last time. That's a very negeya to, to me. It's less, but it's negeya to you also. It's negeya to you also. You get an Amazon delivery on Chavez. You get an Amazon delivery on Chavez, and they drop the Amazon package at your front door, and it's raining, and you want to get the Amazon package inside. Now, what do you mean? I'm here in Willowbrook. I have an Erev. And I have an Erev at Tzeres. So why can't... Now, it might be Muktza, but why can't I kick it inside? Why can't I clock a yad? Tiltomanatzad. Why can't I kick it inside? Well, wait a second. Where was this Amazon package at Zman Kenisa Shabbos? Was it in a warehouse? Was it in some Amazon warehouse? Was it in a postal facility? Where was it? Is it a Kali Shabbos Babayas? And if it's a Kaili Shashavas Babayas, was it within Willowbrook's Erev? I'm sure it wasn't. Is there any Amazon warehouse inside Willowbrook's Erev? I doubt it. So where was it? So it was probably a Kaili Shashavas Babayas, not in your Chatzar, and not in the Chatzar that you're more of with. Now, this is, not, this is worse than the halacha that we're talking about here. Because now you want to take this Kaili Shashavas Babayas somewhere else, and you want to bring it from the chutzner into the bias. Oh, sir, not allowed to. You can't bring it in. So that Amazon package has got to stay outside. You can't bring that Amazon package in. What are you doing? It's not your shizu, right? In the front of your door? It's a Kalisha Shavas Babayas from outside your chutzner. Now it's in your chutzner. How did it get to your chutzner? Your chutzner, you don't have an area with that chutzner. If they throw it in, now says the Bir Alacha, Bir Alacha says like this. Let's change, 
What happens if you ordered, uh, uh, it's not so common anymore now, but let's say you made an order from, you're making a Shalom Zacher Friday night, and you ordered from your local beverage center, you ordered beer, and they bring the beer on, on Shabbos, and now they bring the beer into your house. So says the Chavetz Chaim, a guy brings mashkin to your house on Shabbos, and he brought it from a different chatzar that you don't have an Erev with. Are you allowed to be metaltalit in the bias? Says the Chavetz Chaim 100%. In the bias, you definitely can be metaltal. He says, there's no makar, there's no source for asering tiltal inside a bias. To aser tiltal in a chatzar, that you could aser. Because a chatzar, we treat it sometimes like a Rosh Hashanah And in a Rosh Hashanah there's an iser tiltal. But in a bias, there's never an iser tiltal in a bias. So in the bias, you don't have to worry. So if the Amazon guy comes and he, and he knocks on the door and you open the door and he chucks it inside, all right, it's inside. Now I can do whatever I want. That's why I said by my house, he puts it on the front porch and my front porch is roofed over and it has halachic mechitzes. So it looks to me like that has a din bias. So the package is already in the house. But sometimes the Amazon guy is lazy and he leaves it down the steps in front of the house. Well, then I would have, if the Arab is down, I would have a problem anyway. But even if the Arab is up, I can't bring it in. It's in the chutzr. I can't bring it into the bias. Now that I bring it for the chutzr to the bias. Same thing with the hat. So now I'll give you again with the hat. Here's a very, a very simple one. Get a load of this. Let's say by me and yeshiva. Let's say the community Erev is down. So yeshiva has an Erev. Yeshiva's Erev is up. I go to shul on Erev Shabbos. I go to yeshiva Erev Shabbos and it's raining. I take my coat. I hang my coat up in the coat closet before Kabbalah Shabbos. Now, in the middle of Kabbalah Shabbos, comes Man Kinesis Shabbos. What's the status of my coat? My coat is a Kaili Shavas Babayas. It started out Shabbos at a bias. Now, if the Mayriv, I go to the coat closet, I take my coat, I put my coat on. I wear my coat, I go out of Yeshiva, and I go out of Yeshiva's Erev. No problem. I'm wearing a coat. I'm allowed to carry it. I'm wearing it. Derek Malbush. Yeah, okay, we, we can get to that. We, we can get to that. But the yeshiva is more complicated too because it's a dormitory. But, uh, if I, so I walk out. A shul pashtus is a chotzer. A shul is a chotzer. A shul pashtus we pass it as a chotzer. Yeshiva is a bias. So now, I walk out of yeshiva's area and I'm wearing the coat. I left the chotzer that my coat started out in. Now I go home. Now forget the din of my porch. Let's imagine I have a front yard and I have a little Erev in my front yard. So I walk into my front yard. Now I walked into my personal Chatzar, right? My wife is sitting outside on, on the bench, and she's waiting for me, and it's not raining. So I take my coat off. I'm in, I'm in my Erev, right? I take my coat off. I sit down next to my wife, and I schmooze for five minutes. Now I want to go into the house. I'm not allowed to carry my coat into the house. Because I'm taking a Kaili Shashavas Babayas, in a different chutzr. It came to my chutzr. My chutzr doesn't have an air of yeshiva's chutzr. So it came to a different chutzr. She'ena mu'reves. Now it came there by even heter. But it came there. It's there now. You know how to take it into the bias. You want to take it into the bias? You got to put it on. So fine. You put it on and you walk into the house. But you can't carry it into the house. You got to put it on to take it into the house. Well, even according to the Chazanish, the Chazanish doesn't affect us. Because, I'll tell you why, one second. Because, uh, one second, because that was a Kaili Sheshavas, that's the, um, that's the hat case. No, that's to be metaltal in the Chatzar. That's to be metaltalit in the Chatzar Dalaramas. Chazanish allows you to be metaltalit. I could walk around in my front yard carrying the coat, Dalaramas. But I can't bring it into the bias. Without putting it on your hand? Without putting it on. You gotta wear it into the bias. Now, again, you're not gonna come across this Shiloh that often. It's only just the bias. It would have been just in a Chatzar, like Sanchez. Not only that. Right, that it's a Kaili Shashavas Pachatzar. Now, now, if it's a Kaili Shashavas Pachatzar, you're still going to have a problem to bring it into the bias. You can't bring it from a chutzah to the bias. Uh, so either way, so either way. The where, where you don't have the problem, 
says the Bir Alokha in Dibra Mascha Lechotzer Acheres, the hat that I'm wearing at Zman Kinesis Shabbos. If I'm wearing my hat at Zman Kinesis Shabbos in a bias, it's not called a Keli Shabbos Babayas, it's not called a Keli Shabbos Bechotzer. It was Shabbos on your head. That doesn't count. That you can bring it wherever you want. So you're wearing your hat, you don't have a problem. At the Zman Kinesis Shabbos. Now, now, again, this is a lot to digest, but I'm just showing you over here. I mean, I have to tell you, I told Rabbi Goldman, I said, I, I think we could be hard-pressed to find 10 people in yeshiva that know this halacha. I don't know the uh, yeah, but it's, but it's, it's from the Mishnah Bruin, from the Bira halacha, it's black and white. I looked at the Archa Shulchan, I was hoping to find an escape hatch in the Archa Shulchan. And Archa Shulchan, at least over here, the Archa Shulchan doesn't discuss it. Doesn't even discuss it over here. So it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild. And here you have with these Durabonans. <laughs> these Durabonans can really get you. You know? Okay. Now we'll go weiter. Sif Beis. On Rish Lama Tesam and Beis. Says the Mechaba. Tarpeis Yeser al Sosayim. This Sif is kind of a Chazara Sif from way back, uh, way back when. In the beginning of Chalik Dalit. Karpef yeser al sosayim shaloi hukaf ledira heavy karmelis. You have a karpef. A karpef is a mokka mukaf mechitzais. It's an area, that, it's a yard that's surrounded by walls. But it's yeser al sosayim. It's larger than 5,000 square amas. And it was not hukaf ledira. It was not enclosed for residential purposes. So the classical case of chazal is that you had a chotzer where people lived, and outside the chotzer, they made a corral, or they made some kind of enclosure that they used to store firewood. Or they used it to store animal fodder. But it's a big yard. It's yeser mi beis asayim. It's greater than 5,000 square hours. And there's no house in it. It's not hookah fladira. It wasn't enclosed for residential purposes. That kind of area, Chazal said, again, it looks and it smells and it feels too much like a rishos harabim. So they made it a Carmelis. They made it a Rishus Rabbanon. Now, what's the din of a Carmelis? You're not allowed to be metaltal more than Daladamas in a Carmelis. You're not allowed to go from a Carmelis to a Rishus Ayakin and from a Rishus Ayakin to a Carmelis. But you are allowed to go from one Carmelis. Go. When I say go, I always mean you're not allowed to transfer something. You're not allowed to transfer something from a Carmelis to a Rishus Ayakin, from a Rishus Ayakin to a Carmelis, from a Carmelis to a Rishus Aram, from a Rishus Aram to a Carmelis. But from Carmelis to Carmelis, you are allowed to. So, says the Mechaber here, Karpef Yeser al Sasayim Chaluk of Ladira, have a Karmelis, it's a Karmelis. Therefore, the Aser Letaltal Mimenu Lekapef Acher, you're not allowed to transfer something from this Karpef Yeser Mi Beis Sasayim Chaluk of Ladira to another Karpef Yeser Mi Beis Sasayim Chaluk of Ladira, Lahachnis Lahaitzi Mizelaze, to bring things in or bring things out. From one to the other, ki im shte amo ispaze u shte amo ispaze. You're only allowed to go a total of four amas. So that would be two amas in this one and two amas in that one. What's the Mechaber saying? What the Mechaber is saying is remember, a karpef yesemi beis sasayim shaliuk of is a karmelis. What's the din of a karmelis? You're only allowed to be metaltal up to dollar amas inside a karmelis. Another din of a karmelis. You're allowed to transfer something from one Carmelis to another Carmelis. Very nice. You're allowed to transfer from one Carmelis to another, but you only have a total distance of four Amis. So you could do two Amis in this Carmelis and two Amis in that Carmelis, or one Amis in this Carmelis and three Amis in that Carmelis, but you can't exceed four Amis. Says the Mishnah Brewer, a nice cut in your design. Also, within this carpe, if you're only allowed to be metatal up to Dalad Amis, you're not allowed to transfer to another carpe for Tzayin Aloymar, 
Karpev Shu Kamayu, a similar type of Karpev, which means Shamasik Yoisimi Be Sasayim. It's greater than 5,000 square amas for Lehuk of Ladira, and it was not enclosed for residential purposes. The Ilu Emena Masik Rak Be Sasayim, if it would be smaller than 5,000 square amas, Ayichu Masik Yoisimi Be Sasayim, or even if it's greater than 5,000 square amas, the Hook of Ladira, but it was enclosed for residential purposes, which means that there was a house there, and then you put up a fence around it, then I don't care how big that fence is. If you have a house, and now you put up a fence around that house, even if you enclose uh, 10 acres, that's still going to be a Rishos HaYachid because it's Hook of Ladira. Rishos HaYachid Gomerhu. That is a Rishos HaYachid Gomer. That's a real Rishos HaYachid. Vaso Lachdus Elohitzi Elov Klau Mi Karpev Zechul Karmelis. And you wouldn't be allowed to go from this Karpev to a, another Karpev Shalohuk of Ladira, that would be going from a Rishos HaYachid Gomer to a Karpev, to a, to a Karmelis, which you're not allowed to do. He's cutting your tests. Between the two Carmelis and between the two Carpes, you get a maximum of four Amis, Kim Shte Amis, then be Carmelis to Carmelis Mutter. You're allowed to transfer from one Carmelis to another, Ukudelael Basim and Shinmem Vasiv Gimel. The Chol Zebekalim Sheshav Subasaychan. This whole discussion only pertains to Kalim that started out Shabbos in the Carpe or in the Chatzar. Dilu Kalim Sheshav Subasaychan Bias. If we're talking about a Kali that was Shabbos Babayas, the Huvu Le Carpe Fal Yideyako Mukai Gavna, and it was brought into the Carpe through a guy or some other ifen of heter, also like you see on the karpev acher, you wouldn't be allowed to bring it to another karpev because what are you doing? You're taking a keli sheshavas babayas that is now inside a chotzer because this karpev, which is not a karmelist, it's a regular karpev, is basically a chotzer. You can't bring it now to another chotzer. Yeah, he's just giving you an ifen heter. He's just giving you one ifen heter that it ended up in the karpev. Yeah. Says the Mishnah, says the D D D D D Mechaber in Siv Gimel. Shtei chatzeros sheroitzais laarev yachad lahatir af kelim sheshav subabotim. Okay, so you have bungalow colony A and bungalow colony B. They're right next to each other. Right now, bungalow colony A has its individual iruvah chatzeros. Bungalow colony B has its individual iruvah chatzeros. The guys who live in bungalow colony A are allowed to move their lawn chairs from their bungalows to their chatzar, because they have an Erev. Same thing in bungalow colony B. But right now, you cannot move any lawn chairs from the bungalows in bungalow A, even to the chatzar in colony B, because you cannot move a keli sheshavas babayas from colony A, even to the chatzar in colony B. Kelim sheshav suba chatzar, that you could do. But Kalim Shishav Subabais, you cannot do. So now the residents of Bungalow Colony A and the residents of Bungalow Colony B get together on the following Shabbos and they say, Look, you remember last week we didn't have enough lawn chairs for the Pirkei Avashir? Let's make a joint Erube Chatzeros. Let's join both of our colonies in one Erev. So now we'll be able to move even Kalim Shishav Subabais. We'll be able to transfer back and forth between our colonies. Yes, you'll be allowed to do that too. If you go into a joint Yeruvah Chatzeros, you can move from the bias on this side to the bias on that side, from the bias to the Chatzor, from the Chatzor, you can do whatever you want. No, but now you're all Moriv. Now you can do whatever you want. Now, we're going to see later that a great caveat over here is that in order to join these two Chatzeros, there has to be a gateway if you have a fence between colony A and colony B, if there's no gate in that fence, if there's no opening, then you cannot join them in one Erev. How can you join them? They're two completely different Chatserim. You can't join them. In order to join them, there has to be a doorway. Otherwise, you can't join them. So we're assuming right now that there's a doorway. And now they want to join. Says the Mishtabur, says the Mechaber, ain't Srichais Erev Acher. You don't got to make a new Erev. What do you have to do? Take the box of matzahs, let's say the box of matzahs that colony A used to make the Ruruli Chatseris. Take the box of matzahs. One guy in colony A could pick up the box of matzahs, the rest of his colony, carry it over to the bottle of colony B, and deposit it in one of the houses in colony B, 
and now you have a chutz or an eruv that joins everybody. And if a, a resident of colony A wants, he doesn't even have to take the box of matzahs from the eruv. He could take his own challah and go into colony B, put it one in the houses, and say, I'm making an eruv for everybody. The cool mutarim, and everybody would be mutar. What? Oh, so because of what you're saying, the Archa Shulchan says that if you want to join two chatserim in an Erev and one person is going to do it pas mi shaloi, he has to be Maidia, all the residents of his chatser, and he has to have their approval. Because the Archa Shulchan says normally one person can be Mazaka everybody in the Erev because zachin la adam shaloi b'fanov. But over here, it's not a clear zechus. Because by joining colony A and colony B into one Erev, now you're increasing the traffic in both colonies. So you need the approval of everybody to do this. Okay, we'll stop here. Okay.